Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Subscribe and select alerts to stay up to date with the channel content. In this film, we look at the issues and qualities of different gyrocopter nose wheel arrangements. This clip shows a pilot with absolute faith in his equipment, although I'm not sure how many times you can do that before it ends badly. Gyroplanes have effectively two types of nose wheel, free castering and linked, to mean the nose wheel is linked to the rudder, while in a free castering type it doesn't, Steering on the ground is done via left and right differential disc brakes actuated by toe brakes on top of the rudder pedals, as is common on tail dragger aeroplanes. This topic is talked about more in the US than anywhere else, mainly because of the wide range of make and model of gyrocopters available to fly and therefore the opportunity for the different configurations to exist. One of the features of a link nose wheel is that because of the way the aircraft is rigged, in order for the aircraft to be steering straight ahead for takeoff when rudder deflection is normally required, an offset is usually incorporated into the system. During landing with power at idle and the rudder straight, the nose wheel is therefore offset by that amount that was initially allowed for for the takeoff. During landings with linked nose wheels, this sensitive control means that it's difficult to land with significant speed in the ground roll and so the nose is held off. However, hold off too aggressively and you get affected by gyroscopic precession. The biggest myth with linked nose wheel gyrocopters are the dangers associated with crosswind landings, where the view is that the low forward speed makes any crosswind component potentially destabilizing and carrying more speed with the nose wheel that's now not aligned with the aircraft's actual path creates a hazard when contacting the ground. But that's to misunderstand crosswind landings, because it is the stick that stops any drift in a crosswind landing, not the rudder. You can also see that using a proper technique means that the touchdown speed is neither excessively slow, risking a greater crosswind component, nor is the actual touchdown of the nose wheel jerky or aggressive. Any piloting issues in these areas are pure training matters. So which is the better system? And surely you can't ignore the free castering demonstration film. Well on paper you might lean towards the free castering version, but the real answer is different on paper to what translates into the real world, because the major factor in which works better in the real world is pilot familiarity. There's no way you would accept regular landings as per this demonstration, and either nose wheel system can be flown and made to work well but transitioning pilots need to be sure that differences training is a focus. Mistakes are more easily forgiven with a free castering system, but that aside, the nicest feature is an improved turning circle. Keep flying safely.